Ellen McCauley pray it up. And you know, I didn't talk about shame about our weight. And I know I'm not the only one in the room that, I, I say post-pandemic, but we're, we're really still in it. But when we emerged from our homes and came back, I had a lot of shame about the weight I put on over the 18 months. I really did. I'm like, didn't you learn anything, you stupid idiot? Don't you know? Oh, I took that cat of nine tails and I beat myself up like you have no, no, there was no mercy. I didn't say, oh, Alan, you know, you were under a little stress. You did, you, you did the best you could, sweetheart. I love you. Look at all the weight you lost. You didn't gain it all back. No, I didn't do any of that. I called myself every name, I was embarrassed, I was ashamed, and I could have done one of two things. I could have hidden at home and said, I, we're not going to do Pray It Up again. And maybe one of you would have started it up and I would have said, they're crazy, do they know how much work this is? <laughs> but you might have. And, but I said, I must face that shame. And the thing is, is it a shameful thing? Wait, why? Is it? because society says it is? Is it because, why? Why am I supposed to feel shame at this weight and not feel it at 182, my lowest that I got here? That says something bad about what I think about myself. It says something bad about society. And I want to say that the Pray It Off group is not about being a model. It's not about being Gina Lola Brigida. It's about being health, healthy. And the redhead said that she was healthy. <laughs> and she said she has a great body of health. And I have one too. All my stats are perfect. That's important. I want to lose weight to stay healthy, to see my grandchildren. But I do not want to feel shame about it. You know, we're trying to lose weight. We might have put some back on. Is it who I am as a person? And that's where that whole body image comes in. And you know, women, women especially, 97% of women are cruel to their bodies. They say, my arms are flabby. My thighs are flabby. Look at this roll. Look at this chin. Gobble, gobble, gobble. We are cruel to ourselves. And there's this internal voice that says, why didn't you lose weight back in 1976? Because maybe some of that flab wouldn't have been so flabby at 67. We have this internal dialogue. Again, we need to let it go. And then the TV. Dr. Phil has this show where he has all these overweight women, or should I say large size women, uh, see skinny models modeling these uh, wedding dresses and saying, if you lose weight, you can look as good as them. That's what our whole show was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what kind of shame is that putting on these brides-to-be instead of saying, you found the love of your life and, and, and God takes a man and a woman and now you can get married and have a life together. They're being shamed because they don't fit into this wedding dress like these skinny people do. And then we say, why can't I look like that? Why, why aren't I motivated? Why can't I wear a size 12 or a size 10 or a size 6? And then we start shaming ourselves again. And you know, one of the things that brings healing to us and lessens the shame and makes us realize that we are valuable is talking to other people. If people were to ask me what I thought the most important thing about Pray It Up was besides God, I would say the small group. I would say the small group is so important because you're sitting around with people who get it. It's, it you're, they're your peers. They're people who are fighting the same battles. Maybe not in the past the same as you, but similar. And only through faith can we overcome the thought that you say, I'm not good enough. We are good enough. We deserve help. I don't care about being a model in a magazine. I never did. Help. Shame speaks to who we think we are. And guilt refers to something we did. We might feel guilty that we had too many cookies. 
but it's not a sin per se, but that guilt turns into shame when we say, you stupid idiot, you loser. I'm not going to pray it off because of it. Shame leads us to despair through self-isolation. And I like this. I'm going to read this whole thing to you. Instead of daring to enter the battlefield of life with our visible scars, rather than admitting our weaknesses and accepting correction with humility, we hide ourselves from the world and convince ourselves and everything, everyone else that we're just fine or we're totally useless. We escape. And that's what so many of us, we didn't want to escape for those 18 months, but we almost had to. So those of us who showed up on September 9th have to see that shame is a lie that is perpetuated by Satan. He does not want us to feel good about ourselves. He does not want us to say that we are child, children of God who loves us no matter what. I am valuable. You are valuable. We are valuable. Shame wants us to remain stagnant. And love, the love of God, beckons us to exit our safe cocoons and come out and say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am. Here I am. And I want to read this too. In a world saturated with shame, cynicism, and despair, our faith, always offers us light. It is the light of faith that illuminates our everyday lives and moves us from a place of half-hearted to whole-hearted living. To go out in the yard with your buddy and, and do yard work and see how God is in all creation. The next time you hear the whisper that you're a total loss, you name it and you rebuke it. I rebuke that shame in the name of Jesus. And you turn to the Lord because his grace will fortify us to the end. I'm going to stop right there, Bobby.